It's a beautiful day here at Red Hen Racing, and if you've been around for a minute, you know that we really like Rebel 1100s. This is a great bike from the factory. We're gonna show you how to make it even better because just a little bit of effort put into one of these makes it the best touring, uh, day tripper, half-ass adventure bike. It can even be a boat! So we're gonna compare two relatively modified Rebel Whoa. 1100s with vague input from the tiny monster. We're gonna tell you which mods are worth your money. I'm Roby. I'm Gavin. This is Red End Racing. I really like the look of the Rebel 500 SE. However, you cannot get one of these things stocked. This is actually an OEM bearing specifically sized for the Rebel 1100. You can get directly from Honda. However, they only come in black. So if your bike's black, you're fine. This is not black. So I got it paint matched. So the whole thing just kind of goes as it should look. On my Rebel, we're running a Memphis Shades gauntlet fairing that we showed in an install a while back. I think it still looks incomplete since we haven't paint matched it yet, but I do like the direction it's going and the adaptability to swap to different fairings with the pop of an easy quick release. The build quality is excellent and the wind protection offered is much better than stock or even that Puge windshield we had before. It, it didn't do stuff. It did literally nothing to deflect any amount of wind flow at all. This gauntlet windshield makes a huge difference. It's exactly the amount that I want. So I've got this screen protector. I'm, I'm really annoyed by like fine scratches and stuff on gauge clusters, things like that. This is a super cheap screen protector that came from Amazon. There, there's not much to say about it. It has done its job well, but it was kind of cheap and it's bubbling around the edges a little. recommend okay so I was looking at the Corbin and I'm like that's a lot of money damn good deal it is a lot of money well it just so happens Honda actually has the OEM touring seat I'm not so certain I would consider this touring but it does look good personally I like the way the brown contrasts against the silver and the black but also has this like cross hash mark looking on it that kind of makes it look a little classier. I'm excited to see how different this one rides. Oh, can immediately tell a difference on that seat. The seat itself is a lot less cushy than mine, uh, but uh, stiffer, I guess, but not in a bad way. It's very comfortable given we've gone about a quarter of a mile. So, you know, kind of a short judgment period there. But if you're interested in spending the extra money, I think it's... I paid $75 for this. Yeah, I, I didn't pay $75 for my Corbin. <laughs> Not even a little bit. This Corbin seat on here is an absolute must. The stock seat was trash. I could not spend more than 30 minutes on this bike. About 30 minutes in, I was done. With this Corbin seat, I get to that same level of discomfort at about the two hour mark. That's something I can live with. I think that's fine. I'm a very large person and it's hard for me to get comfortable. Hey bud, it's hard for me to get comfortable on a small bike seat. So even as much bigger and cushier as this one is, it's, it can only do so much. If you're intending to do long hauls, I will say the Corbin is 100% worth it. As far as keeping things clean, fuck, I just woke up. Can you tell that we filmed across like four days in three locations? Production value, baby. Like and subscribe, I guess. Anyway, Roby's already gone, but I've got the Blackbird here and it's very dirty. I'm gonna show you some of the things that we use to help keep our bikes clean around here. And it's actually a lot of the same stuff that we use on our cars. We're big fans of Chemical Guys products around here. And there's a couple that I specifically use on the bikes a lot that I think you're gonna like. First, we just talked about how expensive these Corbin seats are. I have one on the Blackbird too, and it's even more expensive than the one on the Rebel because it's, you know, full size, bigger, whatever. It's great. Where I can spend a couple hours on the Rebel, I will drive to Hawaii and back on this thing. That makes no fucking sense. <laughs> to keep that seat taken care of, this is what I use. A lot of leather care products will leave things uh, kind of greasy, oily afterwards. This does not do that. Keeps it clean, keeps it from cracking and dry rotting, fading out in the sun. This bike is mostly stored outside in the elements. And this seat is a couple of years old now and it still looks brand new because I use this stuff regularly on it. Very much recommend. You use it in your cars and stuff too, obviously. If you have any kind of leather saddlebags or anything made of leather anywhere, it's pretty great. 
Next, as far as the paint itself, I like to use this synthetic quick detailer. It's great for being able to just spray and use directly on painted surfaces of any kind. It's what I will wipe down this entire bike with after it's been sitting outside for a month. It's very rare that I do like a full soap and water wash on any of the bikes. I don't like doing that with bikes. A lot of people don't and a spray detailer is the best thing to use. And this is a good one. We've tried other brands. This one, this, I, I like that purple stuff. Yeah. And you can tell that I'm not some kind of brand loyalist. I mean, we still have some you know, other stuff around here. Lysol, what the fuck? But in general, if I need a product for a specific thing, you know, say that I suddenly need some glass cleaner and I'm in the store and can't make up my mind, that's what I tend to end up reaching for because I know that it's going to do exactly what it says without needing a fucking PhD in detailing to know how to use it properly. And it's not gonna cost more than it should. That's why a very large proportion of our detailing supplies is Chemical Guys stuff. And they don't pay us anything to say that. We're not sponsored by them. But if you use our link in the description and use code REDHEN10 at checkout, you do get a 10% discount and we get some small commission. So if you wanna try some out, help support the channel a little bit. These are things that I like and I think you'll like them too. Personally, I thought the handlebars were a little low. I know they make two, two and a half inch risers. These are just one inch risers, but it actually makes a noticeable difference, a very noticeable difference when you're on the road. If you want to feel a little bit more natural, neutral position when you're riding, that one inch makes a tremendous difference. <laughs> it makes a completely different ride for me and it does not affect low speed handling in parking lots and such. The thing I think I like the most about what he's got going on here is these handlebars. Just that one inch rise right there, that's enough to put it at a much more, like much more upright position. I don't know how to explain it. Mine, I feel like I lean forward for the bars a little bit. And on this one, they're right exactly where they should be. This combination of bar height and seat, really nice. You might remember in one of the very first episodes that we brought the bike home, we ditched those Mickey Mouse ear stock mirrors. These are from MZS and I think they are an excellent value. They were like 30, $35. You just have to be careful to lock tight them into place. Aesthetics aside, like I think they look really good, but they also give a much better angle for actually like seeing things behind you. They work very well. I'm super happy with those. Staying on the vibe of rider comfort, we've got this extended floorboards kit. So this kit moved from having a peg right here to a floorboard up here. So instead of a peg, you've got a comfy adjustable floorboard and that kit also extends the foot brake up to here. It's a very nice setup. My only complaint with it is that this anodizing is faded in different spots unproportionally. This gray, that was the same black as all the rest of it there has been an issue with the anodize fading faster than it should. You gotta keep in mind, I haven't even had this bike for a year and all the modifications on it are subsequently less than a year old. Not even a year old and it's already looking like that. We've also had an issue with these set screws backing out. That's actually a longer one that I've replaced and put in there from Home Depot. It's locked tighted into place now and like super torqued, so I haven't had it move again, but it is something to be wary of. Uh, the riding position, you can see where my feet are. They're significantly further forward than they would have been stock. I do find it comfortable. Again, I'm a large person, so, you know, having my feet that much further forward is nice. The angles are very adjustable, and I haven't really tweaked them that much, but I'm pretty happy with it exactly as it is, aside from the quality control issues that they may have. So I'm ever so slowly kind of turning this thing into a make believe adventure bike. So I have the Burley brand BMX style pegs and foot brake, which have some number of teeth on them. It's wider. So if you like to wear boots, they actually fit pretty well, especially if I'm wearing my cowboy boots or my hiking boots or anything like that. All right, that immediately is a big difference in the uh, foot position. You can tell a big difference because on my bike, my feet are out here, but I think I like it. Being in the stock position just with better pegs, that that might be the move honestly this is a this is a very comfortable setup i don't feel cramped in any way some people that are used to being more splayed out touring style 
might would feel that their feet are a little too far high and back. I much prefer a mid control setup myself anyway. Uh, the forward controls on mine just be doing too much. If you're more interested in the stretched out vibe, you might want to consider the extended boys that I have, but I think personally I like this better. Uh, I don't know. It's a tough call. One thing I have noticed, if you're if you're going off of stock pegs, however, since these are wider and kind of a little longer, if you're trying to kind of walk the bike back, you might want to watch your shins. But a thing that I noticed riding this one around the block is that they hit your shins less than those T-Rex ones that I have, those big full floorboards that I have. I've nailed my shin on them several times, and I, I think I like the look of these better too. If you've seen any of our bike content, you know that I only run quad block mounts. This one here specifically uses anti-vibration damper. Uh, also got phone charger cord off to the side. Using their charger that only turns on when the bike is on. A really convenient way to be able to charge your phone and have it front and center mounted where you want. Very good. High recommend. Do not use a fucking ram mount. Do not use ram mounts. I showed you this in the Blackbird video. That motherfucker will absolutely let go on the highway. It's an expensive lesson. Use quad lock. I really had no faith in the original guard up here. If you look at an OEM one, it's this flimsy plastic, has big wide open areas. I was like, man, a rock's gonna go through that thing. So got this guy, it's Burley brand. So this thing's very sturdy, it's actually metal. It's not plastic, unlike the stock one. And it's extremely easy to put on. It's seriously, it's four screws, that's all it is. It's just four freaking screws, it goes right on. Uh, very easy day and it actually does what it's supposed to. Not to mention it looks pretty freaking cool. I used these from Oxford. I could have rigged this up a little better so that this sheathing was actually covering that cord there. Uh, either way, it mounts up very solidly. You can reach the controls with an outstretched thumb. Uh, the grips, super comfortable. They're a touring pattern, so they're not very aggressive. You know, nothing to overthink there as far as the grip itself, but the heat, being able to reach it right there to turn it on, very easy. And when the bike is not running, it'll automatically turn itself off. It'll sense that the bike isn't running uh, low voltage and you see that bloop there, bike's not running, it'll turn itself off. The install on it is super straightforward though. It wires right into the battery, just like the phone charger does. Hook right up, no problem. If you ride in any brisk temperatures at all, those are a must. These are actually the actual Honda heated grips. There's just a little button right here. You push it, it starts flashing, letting you know it's turning on. It'll eventually be steady green and it remembers whatever your previous setting was because there's actually five different settings on this thing and it displays right there on your cluster. What I really like about that over the ones that I have, that display in the gauges is really nice. That's a nice OEM touch that you don't get with mine. Do you remember what those cost? They were like 300 bucks. Like 300 bucks? I really tried to for not pay attention when I was doing it because I knew it was irresponsible. Yeah. We'll find an exact cost comparison for you. Uh, the Oxfords that I have were like 800 bucks. Oh, shit. So, if you pick one up that doesn't have the OEM heated grips, they might be a good option. You could go either way with it. The wiring for them is actually a little bit tidier as well. It connects up to some OEM clips and stuff. So, that's a pretty nice touch. Uh, mine do get hotter than you need and they are reliable and they turn off with the bike with their smart controller. You know, if you want to keep it a little bit more OEM, there's, there's a few nice benefits to those OEM ones. Next up, we got saddlebags. We've got these saddlebags from SW Motec. This is their Legend series. I'll find the numbers for what their storage capacities are. Aesthetically, some people don't like that they're a little mismatched in size, which is, you know, to clear the exhaust, obviously. I fucks with it. I have gotten a lot of compliments on these bags that, you know, they do look really good and they've got a really high build quality. Might not seem like a big deal, but that I found inconvenient a few times is this mouth is not very big. Like that thing pops open and then the mouth is only this wide. A lot of job sites that I go to require a, a hard hat. Fucking nerds. It's small enough of an opening that it's hard to shove a hard hat in and out of there. It, it does have a lot of flex to it, but a cool feature of them is that they lock into place using these pins and then you can just boop. Boop. 
You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. Okay, I don't do this very often. Give me a second. Just needed a little wiggle. Boop. Comes off. Pretty easy. These nubs right here are what hold it onto that framework. And if you're gonna ride without the bags on, that's what that framework looks like when it's left behind empty. Also for storage, I have this uh, Givy top rack. This is an official Givy top rack. Bolts up with those SWMO tech racks, no problem. See if we can put that back on there easier than we got it off. Yeah, much easier. And then all we gotta do is just put that locking pin back in. Come on, little buddy. Boop, boop, there you go. Back locked in place. These bags are expensive, but super high quality and definitely recommend. I did upgrade the suspension, which cost me more than I wanted to, than I wanted it to. However, on my ride to work every single day, I do about 50 miles an hour over an overpass bridge where it's, it's Washington State, okay, it's garbage and you hit it and if you're not prepared, like you're hitting a freaking speed bump, it's probably gonna <laughs> I got the stiletto shocks and completely different ride. I fly right over that same hump and it's like nothing. And same thing, speed bumps, anything, like there's all the potholes in, in Washington State and Washington roads. You sound like you really like Washington. I... Oh, it's traumatized. I highly, highly, highly recommend these. These are adjustable. Honestly, I really haven't had to mess with them at all because it just improved the overall comfort and quality of the ride that I've just not messed with it. We've hit a couple of decent bumps now and this suspension soaks it up much better than stock. I often bottom out the stock suspension on our bike. I have not modified the suspension in any way and I have it set relatively stiff because I'm a relatively large person. Across any heavy dips or bumps, like this thing is just about bottoming out with me on it. I think the total weight rating for this thing is 350 and I hang out around, uh, I'm closer to 320 these days actually. Uh, a couple of months ago I was at 335 and we're, we're doing a pretty good dropping it off. I think a uh, record low I've seen so far was 317 a couple of days ago. So make sure you keep fat shaming me in the comments. Let's keep it up. I have not bottomed this one out, not once. It definitely is a bit stiffer, and it also sits the bike a little bit higher too, so you've got more room before it bottoms out, and it doesn't bottom out at all because it's stiffer. You know what I mean? It's got a lot more travel, especially for someone of my weight. This is a really good suspension setup, and it's going on my list 100%. The last modification, and arguably most important, is this exhaust. Now, this exhaust is technically meant for the touring model, but it fits a non-touring as well. No trouble. Excellent fit, but finish is questionable. As we've established, this has not been on here for, ow, that's a little warm. Hey, I just warmed that up and then I touched it. Uh, yeah, this finish is unacceptable. It started to look like this after, after like six months. And it's not even very noticeable from a few feet away, but even though this may be a new exhaust design, Fanson Hines has been making exhausts for a very long time. And it's kind of fucking unacceptable that they don't know how to put a finish on that that's gonna last more than a year. For it to be completely deteriorating the way it is is just, just not fucking cool. All right, let's see what this thing sounds like opening it up right here. Man, I love this exhaust. It's a good mellow tone. It's not particularly obnoxious. It's not gonna piss off your neighbors, but it is what this bike should have sounded like from the factory. <laughs> nice and deep with a little burble here and there. It's fucking perfect, I love it. Yeah, that's nice. I would be very surprised if Roby's exhaust sounds better than this. So this is the Kaufman's 
Thunder exhaust, which actually you can get all kinds of fun things engraved on the side, and partly why I got it is I had to have the flag, especially since the silver even matches the bike. Sorry, had to be Gucci. Some things that are nice about this is it's extremely easy to install. Now, if you have a, an older Honda Rebel, earlier model bikes do not have a gasket, like a soft metal gasket, which gets right in your way and it's gotta go. Trust me, I'm lazy. I tried to get it on there without having to remove this thing. It doesn't work, you gotta take it off. And I sat there with a flathead screwdriver and a hammer chiseling the bastard off. It doesn't slide off like they tell you it does in that, the- That sounds really familiar. If you thought we were gonna set a record for how long we could go without hitting a new vehicle with a hammer, not today. The older models don't have it. New models will be prepared. But once it's on there, it's good. It's uh, very sturdy. And you can have saddlebags up here. It's not gonna get in the way of your saddlebags. You can pretty much throw anything you want on there and you're good to go. Now, one thing this thing comes with is this little bastard. This is a baffle silencer for your bike. It makes you a good neighbor. And we don't do that around here, so we ripped it out. I already went and did some riding footage to show you what it sounded like before. I'm gonna put this thing in the sport. He does a lot of city riding and he's got some weird settings here. There's sport. This exhaust with the silencer in is definitely quieter than mine, and I don't think it really does this bike justice. I don't think I would recommend it, but we'll see if we can get that silencer out and go for another rip. Here's some of what it sounds like with the baffle removed. not too loud when you're just vibing but when you open it up it's it's definitely got the rumble that it should have had to start with yeah, yeah that's what that's to sound like. so this is not going back in so he's got a couple of things i want his suspension is better i need those shocks and i need those handlebar risers the uh, the difference in riding position is significant sir I'm trying to do a thing. You have a tiny dinosaur at home? Uh, future plans? I know something I think it needs. Nobbies. So if you see an adventure rebel running around soon. I've actually been taking it camping these past couple of weeks in like national parks and stuff and doing, trying to do a little off-road with these absolutely not off-road tires. And there, there also might be a nick on the rear fender now. So, so Roby's doing off-road bike things with his. Mine's more of a more of a thorough day tripper. I think I've got it set up pretty well for that. I've got enough storage to put anything for your small grocery runs and stuff. I think my seat is more comfortable, but I would I would fucking hope so. It was expensive. Uh, all that it needs to finish out and for my bike to be more comfortable as well. I, I'm going to be doing handlebar risers and the suspension. I might switch up my pegs to be more like yours too. I, I don't know that the forward controls quite suit me as much as I thought they would. These are clean and I like the position of them better. So that's something I could see doing to mine. Overall, we got a couple of decent bikes here. If you're thinking about modifying your Rebel 1100, 
leave me a comment. Let me know uh, what kind of stuff you saw today that you think you would be more interested in. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. And otherwise, thanks for joining us. We love you and we'll see you next time. Hey, go fast.